Hello and welcome. So today, as promised, I have for you several fragrances that I will be reviewing in detail. So some of these fragrances are fragrances that we hauled in the past and that I told you that I would circle back with you once I had the opportunity to really test them. So I have a couple of those. Then I also have some fragrances that you are not aware that I have picked up and that I have been testing before behind the scenes because I know that you are looking for these reviews. So I did want to let you know that I had shared with you that I would be reviewing 10 fragrances today, but I had a little bit of a hiccup during testing. So I only have eight fragrances for you today and I'm going to need a little bit of time for the other two. Fortunately, the two that I had the hiccup with are not really spring and summer fragrances. They were fragrances that we hauled quite a while ago and that I was just going to bring back to you to provide you with a detailed review. But the eight fragrances that I have with me today are perfect for the spring and summer seasons. And there's a couple of fragrances in there that you have all been waiting for me to review and others that you don't know that I picked up, but that I'm sure you've been wanting to see a detailed review on. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Marahi, and in this channel, we love fragrances. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes, like today, you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the review of two fragrances that are both part of the same collection. Now, this collection actually has four fragrances in total. The first one is one that you're very familiar with because I've discussed it so much on this channel. Of course, I'm talking about Cad Lash and I'm talking about the Maison collection. And you guys know that one of my top picks and one of my favorite fragrances right now, not just in Middle Eastern, but in general, is Floor Oud. I've discussed that fragrance on this channel to exhaustion. I'm sure you're all tired of hearing about it. And we've also had very lengthy discussions in the comments section of certain videos. Some of you have already picked up Floor Oud, and I'm happy to report that I think everybody has really, really enjoyed their experience with that incredible fragrance. So today I have for you two more of the fragrances that are part of this collection. The first one that we're gonna take a look at is Creation de Rev. And it comes in this box. This is a very, very luxurious collection and it's packaged beautifully. And I think I showed you this when we talked about Flora Oud, but just in case, they all come in a box like this. And then there's a plaque that gives you the name of the fragrance. So you open the box and there is the fragrance. And all of the fragrances come in a bottle such as this one very very luxurious i mean look at the finish on the sides of the bottle very very beautiful and then look at the cap it has that textured finish i really am enjoying this entire collection but let's talk about creation de rev today Let me just start by saying, and I have shared this with you before, but in case you're new to the fam and you have not seen any of the videos where I've discussed Floor Oud from this collection, I can tell you that from the first moment I tried that fragrance, I just knew that this collection was a totally different level within the Cad Lash portfolio of fragrances. 
These fragrances are the epitome of elegance. They are so, so well blended and there is just a feel to them that I can't explain. So before I talk to you a little bit about the olfactory journey of this fragrance, I want to make sure that you know that this fragrance does have ambroxan. So there are certain fam members that do have a little bit of an issue with the note of ambroxan. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that this one specifically does have ambroxan. So this fragrance, this fragrance guys, is an absolute delight. This fragrance opens with quite a bit of pepper. I'm talking about the kind of pepper that's like fiery. It is so peppery that it actually kind of tickled my nose along with the pepper and almost immediately after that initial blast of pepper, you get incense. And the incense is not overpowering or too strong, but it is just right to be able to stay on par with that fiery pepper. So together, they really make for a very powerful and statement-making opening. As you continue on the olfactory journey with this fragrance, you are going to start picking up on patchouli. And the patchouli comes in with some woody notes. And when I first started um, using this fragrance, I thought, you know what, that's just the patchouli. But then I realized, no, there's some woody notes in here. And then I pulled up the notes and realized, oh, there's some cedar wood. But this is definitely, towards the dry down, a bit patchouli heavy but nothing that I would really be concerned about unless you are not into the note of patchouli. Now, obviously, the patchouli and those woody notes give the dry down a bit of a creamy quality. And also, which I will talk to you about in more detail later, but because it has that note of patchouli that's a bit emphasized towards the dry down of the fragrance, you will find that at times you feel that this may lean a bit masculine. All in all, this is a gorgeous fragrance. It is not sweet at all to me. You know, when I really think about this fragrance and how it is not sweet and the vibe that I get from it, it really does remind me of like Gris Charnel, you know, the uh, unsweetness, the ethereal kind of unsweetness of Gris Charnel. I am not saying that this fragrance is inspired by Gris Charnel because they really are not the same fragrance, but I will tell you that I do get a vibe because, you know, it's like a dryness in the fragrance and I know that that probably doesn't even make sense, but what I'm trying to say is that it is not a sweet fragrance at all to my nose. It does give me like that neutral, ethereal, you know, just that bit of spiciness, uh, just some vetiver and some sandalwood in the dry down, and that's just about it. This is a gem of a fragrance that I think is even worthy of becoming a signature scent for you. This is a fragrance that I would pull during any season of the year for any occasion, day or night. This is a highly elegant fragrance that I am sure will probably not get you compliments. What it will do is probably supplement beautifully and elegantly any outfit that you put together. Also, please keep in mind, which I think I forgot to tell you, that at the dry down, this fragrance is a bit powdery. It's not like a powdery that's really strong that you just can't avoid, but it is a bit powdery right now and this fragrance hasn't had the chance to macerate and actually i've started to wonder if the fragrances in this collection do need to macerate because i have not allowed floor oud to sit at all i just keep spraying it and these two fragrances that i'm discussing with you today i started using them immediately and i just don't get the feeling that they really required maceration time but of course as they sit and age they will get better and better like most fragrances but i just i don't know i just don't think that they're going to need maceration time if any of you which i know several of you have have picked up this fragrance or any fragrance from this collection could you please let us all know your opinion do you think that they needed to sit and macerate or not 
The performance on this fragrance, much like all of the other fragrances in this collection, is really stellar. I right now am getting a solid seven to eight hours with this fragrance. If I overspray, I definitely prolong that period of time. I also get a very, very strong projection during the first three hours. And at the three hour mark, it becomes a scent bubble, but a pretty powerful one. Then at around the five to six hour mark, depending on how much I spray, it does become a skin scent. This for me is definitely a unisex fragrance, truly a unisex fragrance. I really don't think that this leans male or female. I think that this is truly right in the middle, a unisex fragrance. All in all, I am absolutely delighted and so, so happy that I decided to pick this one up because it is truly an elegantly beautiful fragrance and so different than the other two that I have in my collection. In case you did pick up Floor Oud and you're wondering, well, there are some similarities in the way that you described this one, you know, Creation de Rev, and the way that you described Floor Oud. Well, the only real similarity is that they both give me that elegant vibe because that's really like the, the ongoing theme of this collection, if you know what I mean. But other than that, they are very different fragrances and I do not get any similarities in the scent profile itself. So the next fragrance that I want to share with you today is the other fragrance that I picked up from this collection and this one is Epoch Artistique. So this fragrance, oh my goodness, guys, I'm going to tell you right now that this is my second favorite from this collection of the three that I have so far. Floor Oud, of course, still being number one, but this one is a close contender. So this one does open for me a bit spicy. There's quite a bit, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Oh, it opens with quite a bit of cardamom and pepper. But the beauty of this fragrance is that there's uh, the note of lavender, which is basically lavender. It is done so exceptionally. It blends beautifully with the cardamom and the pepper, which is not really something that I would ever expect. As the journey continues, you start to pick up on hints of geranium. And the geranium is just like touches, but the geranium also comes in with like a backdrop of musk. So then the fragrance starts to become a bit musky but the musk is so smooth and so beautifully elegant at the base guys or actually approaching the dry down you start to also pick up on hints of vanilla but the vanilla comes in like at different levels of intensity it starts quite not weak but like just touches of vanilla here and there while the geranium is still in that process and the musk is like taking its place within the fragrance you start to get those hints of vanilla and the sweetness of the fragrance which i pick up and i'll talk about that more in a minute but i pick up the sweetness from the beginning right from first sniff of the fragrance but the sweetness intensifies once the vanilla comes into the picture once the vanilla comes in guys this fragrance turns into an out of this world experience because right after that vanilla you start to pick up on the tonka and the tonka and the vanilla play absolutely beautifully as the tonka and the vanilla are like playing and exchanging like comments between each other then you start to pick up on some woody notes and it's fascinating because the woody notes kind of ground the fragrance and give it a touch of earthiness that really gives this fragrance additional character depth and overall oomph it is just the most beautiful olfactory journey the best part of everything guys is that that dry down is consistent all throughout the wear of this fragrance. You're always going to get that vanilla and you're going to get all of that spiciness, but the spiciness is blended so well with the vanilla. It is just beautiful. There is an inherent continuous sweetness to this fragrance that, like I said, opens with sweetness and then it intensifies until the vanilla takes its place within the fragrance. So let me tell you, for me, Epoch Artistique is not 
a fragrance that you use every day. This is a fragrance that I am currently reserving for special occasions. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be like a formal event or a black tie event, but just like a special occasion because I just can't imagine myself, you know, like having a casual outfit or going on a casual outing and wearing this fragrance. This is an extremely spectacularly beautiful and special fragrance designed for those times when you want to feel beautiful, elegant, sophisticated, and special. And you want to let others know that you have arrived. This fragrance has incredible projection. The projection is quite strong, up to three hours, especially if you overspray. This is a fragrance that gives me incredible sillage. It definitely leaves a trail, which of course leads to me telling you that this is a high compliment getter. I have not oversprayed this fragrance while I've had it because I don't dare. This I would not say is full on beast because I have other fragrances that are even more powerful than this one. And there is something so inherently smooth about the composition of the fragrances in this entire collection. There is nothing screechy or loud or overpowering in any part of the olfactory journey or the dry down. Once that initial projection of two to three hours stops, then it becomes like a scent bubble, but it's a very strong scent bubble. And right around like about hour five to six, it does become a skin scent. But it is the type of skin scent that as you continue to wear the fragrance, especially if you spray your garments, you are going to find that you continuously get whiffs of this fragrance. I've had some family members tell me that they feel that this fragrance at times does lean a bit masculine, but that is not my opinion at all. I really believe that this is a truly unisex fragrance that doesn't lean male or female, especially because of the level of sweetness in this fragrance. I really would not say that this really leans masculine. I just know, in my opinion, that this is a fragrance that has so, so, so much character and that is so special and with so much depth that, you know, at times it can be quite intense. This fragrance has been so special to me, just like Floor Oud, that for me, this, this fragrance, when I wear it, when I sniff it, it just embodies a certain type of individual. This individual is sophisticated and quite worldly. This is someone who is very, very open-minded and who has been exposed to quite a number of cultures. Being able to openly express who they are at all times is critical to the individual that wears this fragrance. I think it's needless for me to have to say this, but just in case you're wondering, I really rate those fragrances, each one a 10 out of 10. So the next two fragrances that I want to cover with you today are two fragrances that were actually a part of a haul, but I hauled one of them in one and then the other in another. But I had the same reaction to both fragrances during that initial first impression, and you guys were witnesses to it. So today I am coming back to give you my full detailed review on Maillar Natural Intense and the original Maillar. But let's go ahead and start with Maillar Natural Intense. So I'm going to start by telling you that as you may recall, when I sprayed and sniffed this fragrance, I just thought that you know, the opening was just not good. There was something very synthetic about it and, and just, it just did not, it just did not smell like fruits, like fresh fruits. There was a very synthetic and plasticky and kind of like gasoline-y kind of opening to my nose. And I told you that I was going to give it some time to sit and that I was going to come back and review it. Since then, several of you have reached out to let me know how much you love this fragrance. But unfortunately, I am going to start by telling you that 
my mind has not changed at all, guys. I, I really am so sorry. I just don't understand it, but I cannot wrap my head around this fragrance. So what I get at the opening of this fragrance is, yeah, it's like a green tangerine, a very, very green tangerine. And in addition to that tangerine, I do get the fig almost immediately after the olfactory journey takes me into like some florals. But at the end, I, I don't even discern one from the other because it immediately becomes like a bomb of jasmine. All I get is that green tangerine with a backdrop of the fig and a very strong jasmine. At the base, I do get the sweetness of the vanilla, but I can't even enjoy the vanilla because the green tangerine note is there and it's so dominant to my nose, I can't get past it. I also get like a creamy body lotion quality to this fragrance, which I think is coming from the sandalwood, but I typically get creaminess from it. I don't necessarily get body lotion quality from it. So I am just like, I don't know guys, I've tried everything that I can. I still am going to let it sit for another three months, but after that, you know, I'm just gonna end up decluttering it. So this fragrance for me is exclusively for spring and summer, and I'm gonna share the rest of the information with you in case you're interested or you just wanted to know what my full thoughts are. So for me, this is not a unisex fragrance at all. This leans heavy towards the feminine side. And this is a fragrance that I would only pull during the spring and summer seasons. And at that, only for daytime occasions. I can't imagine myself going out uh, for a night on the town or for a date or for any type of evening or night event using this fragrance during the spring and summer seasons. The good news is that this does have a pretty moderate uh, sillage and projection, and it gave me a good solid six to seven hours, only becoming a skin scent around hour five. So that is pretty good. That's pretty good performance. All in all, guys, I just, I just can't with this one, and I give it a three out of ten. So the original Maillard is the next one that I want to talk about. Now, this fragrance, guys. Ah, oh, this one. It is so interesting because this one, I'm just going to spoil it right now and tell you that this is an absolute love for me. Absolute love. Let me tell you, when this fragrance opens, I clearly get the lychee and the raspberry and the most beautiful violet. And immediately I start to pick up on like hints of powderiness, but the powderiness really does not come into full effect, at least on my skin with this fragrance until the full dry down. After that initial opening, almost immediately, I start to pick up on some florals and the florals are done beautifully. And for part of the olfactory journey, the florals are quite intense, not heady, not obnoxious, not loud, not screechy. It's just that I pick up on all the florals. And for a moment, I think, okay, so the fruits are gone. No, it's like the florals take over only to like make their statement that they're here to play in the fragrance. And then they like take a back step and fall into the backdrop and allow all of the other opening notes as in the fruits to make their full appearance again. But at this point, the florals nor the fruits become dominant in the olfactory journey of this fragrance. They just play very well together. As you approach the dry down, then you start to pick up on the vanilla. And for a moment, the vanilla is truly dominant. It's almost like the vanilla says, move over florals, move over fruit. I am here, I am vanilla, hear me roar. That kind of like effect. It's just a beautiful exchange of notes. And to me, it's done absolutely beautifully in this fragrance. At the base or dry down, what I get is like, like the vanilla is like hugging or wrapping its arms around the fruits and just giving little hints of its beautiful sweetness to the florals. And of course, all of that 
is with a beautiful backdrop of powderiness. But this powderiness is not thick at all. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like an airy powderiness that just like the rest of the olfactory journey with all the notes plays very very well with the vanilla and the fruits and the florals this fragrance performs really well for me i get a solid six to seven hours with this fragrance and it does become a skin scent around the fifth hour the projection and sillage on this fragrance are also to me moderate they're not as strong to be honest with you as in the Maillard natural intense but this one does not leave much to be desired this is definitely a spring and summer fragrance but i have to be honest with you i may even pull it during the fall season because i really do like this fragrance and i can see how i could probably layer it with some sort of oud fragrance that's not sweet at all and this which is bring it to the next level. This to me leans heavy on the feminine side and it's a fragrance that, like I said before, I would really reserve for spring and summer and maybe even use it during the fall, but for any occasion, day or night. All in all, I really love this fragrance and I do highly recommend it. I am going to give it a 9 out of 10 only because the notes in this fragrance and the entire kind of scent profile and the composition are not really anything new. But still, I couldn't give it less than a nine because I think this is really a beautiful fragrance. All right, so before we jump into the fun, fruity fragrances of summer, I want to cover with you this fragrance. And this one is called Kawafi. So since I haven't hauled Kawafi on the channel, I just wanted to share with you the box that it comes in. So the box pretty much has the same pattern that you can find on the bottle of the fragrance. When you look at this bottle, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, that is a summer fragrance. That the ombre effect on the bottle, and it's just, there's just something that speaks to summer and spring to me. But this fragrance is really an all year round fragrance and oh my goodness guys this was a love at first sniff for me so this fragrance oh, it opens with quite a bit of saffron and pineapple but the saffron guys is done beautifully because it's not that thick spicy kind of dense uh, saffron it's more like an airy saffron that's been blended beautifully with the pineapple so it's almost like the saffron smells like if it were like a saffron pineapple if you know what i mean it is an exquisite opening the fragrance is sweet but not too sweet it's really not too sweet at all and following that beautiful opening with the saffron and the pineapple, then you get cardamom and davana. And I picked them up clearly. There is no mistaking it. So at a certain point of the olfactory journey, this fragrance gives you a bit of a spicy feel. Then at the base, you're going to get that cardamom and that saffron and the pineapple because the pineapple never leaves the scene. But the pineapple is not dominant, don't get me wrong. It's just the beautiful way that the pineapple and the saffron and the cardamom play, while the Davana takes kind of like a back seat. But then at the dry down, you have the vanilla and you have like a faint oud, a very, very faint oud. It's almost like a negligible oud, but it's there. And Tonka. This is a fragrance that I would pull for any season of the year, but I think it is very, very well suited for the seasons of spring and summer. Would I wear this on a very, very hot day of summer? No, not really. Not because of the oud, in case you're wondering, because I told you it is quite negligible, but I just don't get that feel of very, very like above 80 degree weather and wearing this fragrance, to be honest with you. But other than that, this is a fragrance that I would use any season of the year for any occasion, day or night, with the exception, like I said, of summer nights. This fragrance has incredible performance. I get a good six to seven hours from it, 
And remember that this fragrance has not had a chance to macerate, so God only knows what we're going to get from it in the future. But right now, I get six to seven hours. I do get a moderate projection and sillage. This fragrance really has an incredible feel to it because for me, it almost borders on like mysterious. It's actually almost bordering on sexy. It's kind of like a little bit dark and a little bit mysterious. I don't know. There's just something about this fragrance. I tell you, it was an immediate love for me and I highly recommend it. I really give this fragrance a 10 out of 10. So the next fragrance that I want to share with you is Batik. So Batik is a beautiful fragrance that was launched by, I think, Aroma Concepts. And what I can tell you about this fragrance is that you see this little tiny bottle? Well, this little fragrance, please do not be mistaken. This fragrance does make a statement. Guys, this is truly summer in a bottle. Remember when I discussed with you Taskeen Marina? Well, this one gives me the same vibes. I'm not saying that they're the same because they are not at all whatsoever. But you know that summer vibe that I talked about when I discussed Taskeen Marina with you? I get the exact same thing with this one. And I actually love that it comes in this little bottle because it means I can easily put it in a suitcase and bring it with me on a vacation. So let me tell you about the journey with this fragrance. Oh my goodness. So this, oh, this fragrance, let me just start by telling you that the star of this fragrance, without a shadow of a doubt, is watermelon. You are going to get watermelon at first spray, during the olfactory journey, at dry down, and any and every time you wear this fragrance. This is all about the watermelon. But what I find fascinating about this fragrance is how were they able to have such a real and strong note of watermelon and then surround it by so many other notes that could be overpowering to a watermelon. So let me just start by saying that at the opening, I do get the watermelon and I get the pear clearly. What I don't get is the tangerine and the pear is quite realistic in unison with the watermelon. Then almost immediately I pick up on the strawberry and the strawberry is like a ripe and juicy sweet strawberry because the sweetness that I pick up on the fragrance I really think is coming more from the strawberry than from even the watermelon. The watermelon is just so juicy and so real and so natural. There's actually like an aquatic quality to it. And I think it is coming from the watermelon. In addition to that strawberry, then you have the rose. And the rose does not take a dominant place because like I said before, the star of the fragrance is and will always be the watermelon. But the rose does come in and it's like a fresh and young rose, but it's in the backdrop or in the background of that watermelon, which is definitely the star, surrounded by other notes such as the pear and the strawberry. As I approach the base, I start to pick up like on a bit of nuttiness and I guess that's from like a praline kind of note because at the dry down, oh my goodness, at the dry down, you are going to get an intense and sweet watermelon accord sitting on like a bed of a nutty musk. And it is delightful, almost to the point of like you being able to envision yourself biting and, and really tasting and enjoying a fresh and beautifully ripened watermelon. I currently can get seven hours from this fragrance. The very strong projection, if I overspray, that will take me up until about the three hour mark. And then right around hour five, it does become a skin scent. This is definitely a fragrance that I will only most likely pull during the summer, but you could get away with using it during the spring. I just know that this is such a summer in the bottle type of fragrance for me. I will be pulling this quite frequently and this is definitely a fragrance to bring on any summer vacation. 
I definitely give this fragrance a 10 out of 10 and keep in mind that when I rate a fragrance, I consider what it was designed for, like for what season, for what use, you know, stuff like that. And by the way, this is a fragrance that I would limit to casual occasions. I cannot imagine myself going on a date or on a formal event or any type of semi-formal occasion with this fragrance, even during the summer season. So the next fragrance that I'm going to review for you is a fragrance that was part of a haul here on the channel. So I did spray it quite a number of times and then I let it sit for a couple of weeks and it did make quite a difference. And I can tell you that today I am really in love with this fragrance. And I am speaking about Pear Potion. Now this fragrance, as the name says it, this fragrance is truly all about the pear. Front and center, that pear will be with you from first spray all the way to dry down and throughout the entire wear of the fragrance. You are going to get a very fruity, juicy, ripe, smooth pear. You know how sometimes you can have a pear and if it hasn't ripened properly, it's kind of hard? No, not this pear. This pear is when it's already fully ripe and you cut into it and you even get a little bit of juiciness from it, that's the pear that you get in this fragrance. So for me, the opening of this fragrance is all about the pear because that's honestly, guys, that's all that I get. And it is absolutely delectable. It's almost like I can envision myself biting into a pear. I absolutely love this fragrance. It is so hard, in my opinion, to get a pear note to be so realistic. I've seen many fragrances try to do that and fail, but this one, I don't know how they did it, but this is really exquisite. Then as the journey continues, I start to pick up on a very, very creamy and well done caramel that infuses the fragrance with an additional level of sweetness. But don't be mistaken, this fragrance never reaches the point of being so sweet that it's cloying or obnoxious or just a bit much and overwhelming. Oh no, this fragrance is very, very nicely balanced and I can tell you that to my nose, that pear and the caramel play very, very well together. Then almost immediately after the caramel comes into the picture and it settles in and it's playing well with the pear, then I start to pick up on some florals. And dominant within those florals, what I really get is jasmine. Then at the dry down, guys, actually, as I'm approaching the dry down, I do start to pick up little hints of what, at the beginning, I didn't even know what it was, but then I figured out, oh my goodness, that's the raspberry. So I get like little faint hints of it, but then at the dry down, oh my goodness, at the dry down, I'm getting the most realistic pear with the raspberry, Oh, like wrapped in that creamy caramel, sitting on a base of like floral infused musk. This is a fragrance that I know that I am going to pull during the spring, summer, and fall seasons. This is to me not a unisex fragrance, or let me correct that. I think that this is a unisex fragrance, but one that leans on the feminine side quite heavily. Needless to say, I give Pear Potion a 10 out of 10. So the next fragrance and the last one that we will be reviewing today is Kisa Pink. So Kisa Pink is really a, what I would call pink fragrance, you know, like the Yaras of the world, which by the way, you know, it is said that this is nothing but Yara, but we're going to talk more about it. So this fragrance for me opens in a quite synthetic and, and non-realistic apple and coconut note. I don't even think that the blend is actually that good of the coconut and the apple. Like, I don't know, there is just something off about this fragrance and I've had it for a while and I did spray it immediately when I received it because I wanted to have it ready for testing in preparation for spring and summer. But I can tell you that the opening for me is, is just not pleasant. As the journey continues, they both become a bit more realistic. 
specifically the coconut. I do pick up on the coconut a bit more. And the violet comes in, which immediately starts to make the fragrance a bit powdery. I pick up on a faint jasmine and I really don't get the rose at all. At the base, you are going to get, at least I do, that same combination of like that synthetic-y smelling fruit with the sweetness of the vanilla and a bit of patchouli. The patchouli is not dominant at all and I am pretty sure the patchouli is not responsible for what I get from this fragrance because it only really comes in almost at the very end towards dry down. I just overall, guys, am really not impressed with this fragrance at all. I say if this one is being compared to Yara, then please stick to Yara. I'll say, in case you're still interested, that it does perform very well because I do get six to seven hours from it and it does become a skin scent around hour four. But the skin scent is quite strong. I do get moderate sillage and projection from the fragrance. This is definitely a fragrance that leans feminine, and it's also one that I would definitely limit to the spring and summer seasons. All in all, I'm really not impressed with this fragrance, and I give it a 5 out of 10. And I gave it such a high ranking, although it really has not worked out for me, I'm giving it that rating because it does have pretty good performance. All right, guys, so we have reached the end of today's video, and I hope I was able to give you all of the information that you need in order to make a decision if you were interested or considering picking up any of these fragrances. You know what my opinions are on all, and you know what my top picks are. Thank you so much for hanging with me today, and I will see you in the next video.